Hello, my name is John Rose. In this video, I'd like to take a closer look at malaria and diseases in wild animals. And this is a follow-up video to the, my last two videos where I went into pneumonia and colds and flus and explained how those were both self-limited diseases. And I explained that in much more detail in my videos, Healing Secrets Revealed and medicine is the ultimate tool of control and you can go to the description box down below and go to a link for those videos and be sure to watch pneumonia and uh, whether or not we eat a cold or we catch it uh, videos and I'll have those links down below also if you haven't seen those but this is all going to tie together because I'm sure a lot of you guys are saying well wait a second John I, I just can't wrap my brain around this that the contagion being a myth I've got too many references uh, what about malaria? What about the, the, uh, the wild animals? They get sick, they're eating raw food. How do you explain that, John? Well, there's a simple explanation for why animals and uh, wild animals get sick in nature. It's the same reason why civilized people get sick. Disease is part of our feedback system to let us know how well the environment is sustaining us and how well we're interacting with our environment. Most animals know how to react, interact with their environment the right way, but we see what happens when a bear breaks into a cabin and eats all of, you know, will eat anything. You know, once any animal is exposed to our crap, they'll eat it because it, they're satisfying a need. So that happens in some cases, but what's really happening with most animals in nature, and the reason why some animals will get hoof and mouth disease and others won't, is because of the soil fertility where they, where they well, from the food that they eat. So whatever they eat depends upon the, the health of the soil. And what we find is when animals are well nourished, they don't get sick in nature. But if they don't have granite and, and sand in the soil, and they've got too much lime, for example, then they'll have a copper deficiency and won't be able to make catalase, which is the pr predominant protective enzyme for the, of the immune system. So there's a reason why animals get sick in nature. Uh, and again, a lot of it has to do with the environment they live in. And we know what humans have done to this planet. I don't know if there's any place on this planet we, we don't have our environmental toxins uh, signature on in those locations. So that is always going to cause problems too. But the main reason why animals get sick in nature has to do with whether or not they're eating enough food, whether or not they're getting food that's that's grown in fertile soil. So we humans are subject to the same problems. What is the soil fertility with the food we're getting? Does that contribute to our sickness? Of course it does. Uh, there's a reason why our food's been grown on artificial fertilizers and sprayed with pesticides. This is a way to keep us sick and easy to be controlled. This is why most of us don't know any of this stuff. Now to illustrate how this extends to so many things, let's take a look at malaria. Now, what about malaria? I, I see a contagion element there. And yes, there is a contagion element with diseases, insects, um, mosquitoes and fleas, for example. Um, they spread filth, they spread fecal matter, they spread uh, toxic substances, they spread parasites, but they don't spread disease. Disease is a bodily process. So let's stop for just a moment and, and think to ourselves, what is disease? First of all, it's pronounced the wrong way. It's dis-ease, dis-ease, not at ease. Something is wrong. It's not disease. Where'd they come up with disease? They don't want us to pronounce it dis-ease, not at ease. What's wrong? It's part of our feedback system. When an animal gets hoof and mouth disease, what does that tell us? Hey, there's not enough uh, uh, granite and sand in my soil, I got too much lime, can't make catalase, don't have any kind of immune system. I guess that means we're supposed to be extinct. I'm not supposed to be living here. That's what it tells us. So we see the connection between what an animal eats and when it gets sick. In fact, I remember listening to a PBS show a long time ago. And I was, it, it, what this guy said made a lot of sense. They were, they, were, they were talking to veterinarians at zoos and they go, we know at zoos that if an animal gets sick, the first thing we look at is what is it eating? And then if it's an anteater and it's eating ants, what are the ants eating? Did the ants get into something? <laughs> or do we, do, do our so-called experts in health for us pay that much attention to what we eat? No, they're intentionally not taught this information. 
So if you are miseducated and misdirected by the sick people who rule the world and you get a degree in medicine, you're not taught how the lymph system works, you don't understand how the disease process works, you, you, you're not taught the true cause to a lot of our diseases that were blamed on viruses and germs, when all it was is just filth. So in many cases, disease is just a matter of waste matter, whether it's outside of us or it's inside of us. And this is interesting. I didn't think of this until relatively recently. I realized that, and I've always used this as an example, that to illustrate why all those diseases that supposedly eradicated by vaccines went away because we figured out the problem, it was a sanitation problem. The Industrial Revolution made us grow, we moved into cities, we weren't dealing with our waste matter outside our body, and that came back and caused all these diseases of filth. These were diseases of filth, and, and they were, the problem was resolved when we figured out it was a plumbing problem. You can look at books like Dissolving Illusions and other books where they show grass from 1860 to 1960. There's a steady decline in all of those diseases because they're, due to, they're due to waste matter. And then I would always use, uh, 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 to illustrate my point in a reverse way, is when the Roman Empire was conquered in the West and in the East about a thousand years apart, the conquerors came in and they did the same thing they always do. They read The Art of War by Sun Tzu. You destroy the infrastructure. That's how you create chaos. You destroy the sewage systems, the aqueducts. People can't satisfy their needs. That's how you conquer a nation. And what happened when they destroyed the sewage systems way back then? The plague broke out. But I, this is what I just thought of recently. And, it made, and I tied the connection to Pottinger cats, the Pottinger cat study, where Dr. Francis Pottinger did a 10-year study with cats, went through 900 of them, fed them the same foods, half of them let them eat the way they would eat in nature, uh, raw, and the other half he made them eat the way we eat it, cooked it for them. Well, the point was here is that the cats ate the cooked food, developed all the same problems we had, but what was interesting in the connection I'm making here is he would take waste matter from these cats and could grow stuff from the cats ate raw, that ate raw food. The cats that ate cooked food, he couldn't grow anything with it. So isn't this an interesting connection? That it isn't just our waste matter that's outside of us that comes back and can cause problems because of the bacteria that's eating it, but it's the wrong filthy waste matter from eating cooked dead food, a bunch of animal products. It's filthy waste. Waste. We humans are disgusting creatures. God, we stink. I can't stand when I'm out walking out in nature and there's a manhole uh, cover or whatever out there in the middle of nowhere and I can smell the sewage from what most of you people are eating. God, you think that would be enough to wake us up. But the problem here is everybody stinks so that we think it's normal. Comparatively speaking, it's normal, but it's not naturally normal. Now, to finish my connection with malaria, about how we live in a sick world, million people are dying of this condition, spread by this mosquito that has a parasite, and yet Jim Hubble found a cure for this, and they're seeing a 90% success rate. Miracle mineral supplement. Google that, look into it, I don't know enough about it. I'm not saying anything more than, I've read about a half a dozen articles on it. It's part of my file on malaria. There's a lot of interesting things in my file on malaria. A lot of things we can do to help prevent this problem, but the point I'm making here is we're not letting that problem be solved. Why do we still have certain diseases of filth in third world countries? Why are these third world countries? They live on a, we live on an abundant planet. We shouldn't have anyone starving anywhere. This is all by design. And I know a lot of y'all aren't ready for this information, but keep in mind, I've been on the hero's journey for over 26 years. When you're on the hero's journey, it all starts off with having the ears to hear, and that's where a lot of you guys are at right now. And I'm sure I scare a few people off when I start going this direction, but when you're on the hero's journey, when you begin it, the first thing you do is you, is you accept the mission. You go down below and do the first of my three-step process and prove to yourself that this is true. The microbe is nothing, the terrain is everything. Get clean on the inside, you don't have warning signs that something is wrong. So that's where you start. And then, once you prove this to yourself, then you go out and you gather more information. You, gather, you, you, you find like minds, and then you have to deal with the obstacles. And that's where I'm talking about right now. I always point this up, because I've been on this journey for a long time, but I want to help everybody on this journey. Not everybody's ready for this part of the story, but we have to understand the obstacles on the hero's journey. There are people who don't want us to be healthy and prosperous. And it's because we're sick. And then the sickness just begets sickness. And I'm not pointing blame at anybody, it doesn't matter. This is where we get distracted. It doesn't matter if it's this group or this group or this group that's doing whatever. 
All we have to realize is that we're sick, we're preying upon ourselves. The only solution to this is to go upstream and all get reconnected. But we can't ignore what happens downstream. We've got to realize that we've damaged society, our anatomy, and the environment. So we've got to clean up the anatomy and we've got to realize that our body has another group of needs because it's damaged. Just like the, the environment's damaged, we have another group of needs. But then there's society we've got to work with. We've got to deal with the damage that, that, that of the people that are controlling our society. We've got to take this back. There's too many people suffering right now. Why do you think I talk about this? Because there are people suffering right now this very minute around the world because most of us are oblivious to what's going on and we're, enough of us are waking up but we just haven't gotten organized to do something about it. And that's where we've got to get other people involved in this. I don't have all the answers. I don't know where to go from here. I, I've got my own area to specialize in getting reconnected. But the downstream work is where I'm trying to appeal to you guys. There's a lot of you guys that are only working downstream and you don't know about being upstream. And once you put this piece to the puzzle, to this piece, now you got a solution. Otherwise, you're spinning your wheels working downstream trying to fix systems when the system is never the solution. But we do have to deal with what we got. We got to we gotta change in stages and go as fast as we can, just like we cleanse as fast as we can. And for most of us, that's a solid food vacation. If you've never done one yet, you've got to give it a try. It's the most exciting thing I've ever done. And I've done it for over 1,200 days in the last 24 years. And you can go down below and listen to an interview with Dr. Roba when he was on day 21. You can watch the Deborah Duncan Show and watch people go through transformations. And then you can go to my seminar and learn how to do this. And then continue on the hero's journey and don't get discouraged when you get real excited and you want to share your results with people and you're going to find so many people just aren't ready for it. That's the sad part of the hero's journey. But you're going to find there's a lot of people who are. And it's interesting how some days you'll go out and talk to 10 people and every one of them want to hear it. And other days you'll go out and talk to 20 and not one of them want to hear it. Don't let it get you down. Stay positive. Realize, even if you have to talk to 100 people uh, uh, that burst your bubble just to save one person's life, isn't that worth it? Sure it is. And remember, if we, can, if we can all just get one more person, and you never know what one person you get that wakes up a whole bunch of people. So I have one of my favorite quotes, a teacher affects eternity. No one knows where their influence stops. So we all have that ability, once we get on the hero's journey, to share our message. We don't have to suffer. We are the enemy. But we are also the ones we've been waiting for. Don't you see? This is an exciting time to be a hero to solve a problem no one else can solve. And most of our problems are self-inflicted, so we are the heroes. It's time that we rise above the ideas of the time. It's time that we, we, we stop making the very first mistake that put us where we are. We gotta acknowledge how important it is to, to not cook our food, that's mistake number one. And as long as you ignore this piece of the puzzle, you will never, ever figure out anything of any importance because if you don't correct the first mistake all you're dealing with are subsequent causes you gotta go back to the first cause and that's the fall of mankind and every culture on this planet warned us and talked about it this isn't this isn't this isn't something from the bible or it's not something from this or that it's from everything everybody talks about it we did something that screwed with us we altered our food it altered us look at us we're sick and disconnected. We prey upon ourselves. We compete for resources on an abundant planet when we should share, uh, cooperate and share the abundance this planet has to offer. We're not doing that because we lost one of our senses. I know I repeat myself, but who knows? I get messages from people all the time in this, the first video, so. And then I get complaints by saying, well, you didn't say this and you didn't say this. Well, how many times do I gotta repeat? Okay, go to this and go to this and go to this and go to this. <laughs> so I've got my work cut out for me and and thanks for keeping up with me when you know you've heard this message before and it's been driven over and over and over and over. Uh, but there are some things that have to be told and repeated. And the main thing that has to be repeated is the condition of what we got. And the biggest factor that determines what we got is what we do, what we eat. We're eating the wrong food. Wake up to that reality. Make better choices and do the best you can. No one's judging anybody here. And who says we have to be 100% to have that minimal biophoton level? Who knows? But I do know one thing. 
Whatever deceives men seems to produce a magical enchantment. There's something about that saying, he who plays with fire gets burned, right? So don't get burned. Get excited. Go down below, watch my seminar. And when you do, you're in for a treat.